continuing in our scenario with Wired Brain Coffee, we performed an assessment of the current workloads that they're going to move into their new VMware vSphere 5 implementation in the new data center. They have 500 workloads they want to run, and they're looking for 15% per year for three years in terms of growth. Based on the assessment, we determined that the workloads are going to require 468 gigahertz of CPU capacity and 714 gigabytes of RAM. On the storage side, these workloads are going to generate, on average, 57 IOPS, and the read-write split is going to be 62% read, 38% write. Total storage capacity based on the assessment is 48 gigs, and average network utilization for each workload is averaging around 75 megabits per second. Now, based on this information, let's look through a few more examples and calculations of how we can use this to begin to craft a VMware vSphere design for Wired Brain Coffee. So now that I've given you some additional information regarding our design scenario here, let's see how we can use that design scenario information to continue our design process. In this case, we're going to look at compute workloads. Now, I've specified here that we're going to use servers with 16 cores, 2.2 gigahertz per core, 96 gigs of RAM. And how many servers would be required in that case? Well, we know that the logical compute design has pretty much already been given to us. That logical compute design was provided at 468 gigahertz of CPU power, right? And 714 gigabytes of RAM. So using that information, how can we then proceed with calculating what our physical storage design is going to look like? Well, at first glance, you would say, well, I'm just going to take this 468. I'm going to divide that here by 35.2. That 35.2, by the way, is 16 cores times 2.2 gigahertz each. And if you were to walk through that calculation, you'd end up with 13.3 servers, or then you'd round that because we can't have 0.3 servers, to 14 servers required to meet the CPU requirements that were specified in the logical design provided in the scenario information. And if we use that same process for our RAM, then we could say that 714 gigabytes divided by 96 gigabytes per server, that gives us approximately 7.4 servers. And again, we would round that up to 8 because we can't have 0.4 servers. And that seems pretty reasonable, but the problem here is that we've overlooked something. That 16 cores at 2.2 gigahertz would only be able to provide 35.2 gigahertz total capacity if we ran it at 100% utilization. And well, in most cases, when we run something at 100% utilization, our response times are not going to be what we need. In addition, what we've specified here, our total aggregate CPU capacity, may not account for specific peaks in workloads, perhaps quarter end peaks or month end peaks as Wired Brain goes through processing all of their sales reports. So we'll need to throttle that back a little bit. And instead, what we need to be looking at is not 468 divided by 35.2, but rather, let's look at 80% of each platform's capacity. And that would be 28.16. That's obtained by taking 35.2 and looking at 80% of that. If we use these numbers, then we come out at 16.6 servers, and we would round that to 17 hosts. Similarly, if we look at 80% memory utilization, we won't be dividing by 96. Instead, we'll be dividing by 76.8, which gives us approximately 9.3 hosts. And we would, of course, round that up to 10 hosts to satisfy our requirements. So as you can see, then, looking at 80% utilization, and based on the logical compute information on aggregate CPU capacity and aggregate RAM capacity, we would need 17 servers, 16 core, 2.2 gigahertz, in order to meet the CPU requirements, but we would only need 10 servers at 96 gigs of RAM to meet the RAM requirements. With this information in mind, what does that tell us about Wired Brain Coffee's workloads? Are their workloads more CPU intensive or more RAM intensive? Well, looking at the numbers, we need more servers to satisfy the CPU requirements than we do to satisfy the RAM requirements. That means their workloads are more CPU intensive. With that in mind, then, what are some of the design considerations or design impacts 
that come from running CPU intensive workloads? Are there other considerations that we need to include? Perhaps we should be looking at lower target VM to core ratios than perhaps if the workloads were less CPU intensive. Remember that our target VM to core workloads or VM to core ratios will indicate how many VMs will share a single CPU core. In this particular case, if we look at the total number of workloads, we know that we have 500 workloads and we look at the total number of cores, which if my math is correct, we have 272 cores. Our target VM to core ratio is already at 1.8. So we already have a pretty low target VM to core ratio, and perhaps that'll be sufficient. As we add workloads to here, we'll have to watch whether these workloads are CPU intensive as well, and if that's the case, we may have to grow the environment more quickly than we would otherwise. Adding less CPU intensive workloads to this environment may be easier to do. If we had found that the workloads were more RAM intensive, then we would have to take into considerations on whether or not we were going to use memory over commit. Where we're we going to actually allocate more than 96 gigs of RAM per host to VMs running on that host and allow vSphere's underlying memory management technologies like idle page reclamation and transparent page sharing to allow us to manage that overcommitment. If an environment is RAM intensive, it might not be the best approach to use memory overcommitment. If, however, the environment is not RAM intensive, then you might be able to get away with overcommitting RAM. Or in this case, we might be able to reduce the amount of RAM in our servers, since we know that we have to have 17 servers to handle the CPU capacity anyway. We might be able to reduce the amount of RAM in the servers and therefore save a little bit of money on the overall project.